What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Talos of Tech. Today we're doing a first. We're unboxing a new phone that's from a company I've never even purchased from before, but they were able to sell me on their new idea, the Razer Phone 2. Really like the simplicity of that name. There's a lot of phones out there, there's a lot of good phones out there with really crappy names, so I appreciate that Razer is keeping it simple. And like I said, I've never unboxed a Razer product, let alone the Razer Phone before, but their keynote really got me hyped up for it. Even as an Apple sheep, I know. I prefer Apple, I prefer iOS, iOS, but I still can respect Android companies when I think they're truly doing something unique and creative. And we've been talking a lot of crap on the Pixel, so I thought today is going to be a fun day to kind of highlight what else is available in the $800 Android premium flagship smartphone genre. So, without further ado, let's open this bad boy up. Unfolds kind of like a Samsung phone here. Oh my goodness. It comes with a letter from the CEO. The CEO was great. I love the Razer keynote. Do I need to read all this? It just says the Razer phone was created for those serious about performance, but they don't want the A12 chip. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna have to read that later. That's great. Oh my goodness, the phone is right there. Dude, that looks really clean. Oh my goodness, okay. Oh man, that's got some weight to it. Dude, look at that boxy look. Oh dude, I love this. This is already looking really, really cool. Okay, we're gonna get the plastic off here. Uh-oh. The plastic tore on the front. I'm not doing this correctly. Nailed it. Okay, this phone instantly has a very luxurious premium feel to the hand. I'm loving the glass back so far, even though I can tell this is going to create a lot of fingerprints over time. Excited to see this RGB logo light up, which is actually a bit more functional than just being the brand of the company. But before we get into that, we had better make sure we look through everything else that's in this box. It's a pretty large box, to be honest. Oh, look at that, it folds like a book. It just rolls right over like that. Now the Razer phone does not have a notch, but they're box does. Look at that. They got this big cutout for your finger to grab from like that. There we go. Oh my god. This is a very fancy box. You get the Razer official USB-C charge brick. Get that right, Samsung. You put the USB-C port on both sides of the charging cable. It's like we got a cord style USB-C cable that looks very, very durable. Oh, they, <laughs> and that's so Razer. Look at this. They put green on the inside of the USB-C cable. Like, I've never seen a USB-C cable look like that before. The inside of of the port is physically green. That That's beautiful. Good job, Razer. I wonder if this charge brick lights up when you plug it in. That, that would be kind of wonderful. Take the plastic off that. Yeah, that definitely looks like a charge brick that can get some serious power delivered through there, which makes sense given the Razer Phone 2 has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, pretty big. And unlike Apple this year, they are still including a headphone jack adapter so that you can use your old headphones. No headphone jack on the Razer Phone 2 itself, just like the last generation. Okay, so I have never taken a look at the 120 hertz display on a smartphone before. I've had an iPad with a ProMotion display, but other than that, this will be my first time using 120 hertz on a smartphone even though booting up the phone for the first time I believe it's set to 90 hertz so we may have to configure that okay so we got the power button pretty low I might add which might be an actual good idea the fact that the volume buttons kind of sit right in the center of the device on the side as does the power button which doubles as the fingerprint reader they put it on top of the power button that actually makes it much much better for one-handed use which I sometimes complain about on even my iPhone 10s Max the volumes way up high so is the power button and on a lot of other smartphones like the note 9 they put the buttons especially with the note 9 on the volume rockers very very high and it's hard to reach for one-handed use razor was smart to put them kind of more in the center so it's a bit more ergonomic so okay i'm pressing the power button here there we go powered by android we're booting right up got these giant dual front firing speakers oh there's a razor boot up screen i haven't seen this before this looks kind of fancy look at that look looks like an apple watch face it's their logo things are looking pretty clean so far okay let's get started okay i know that the display is 90 hertz out of the box but maybe it's my like filmmaker eye I can already kind of see the difference this is already extremely buttery smooth and I don't think 120 hertz is already on yet we're going to agree to terms and conditions I don't think I'm gonna put my sim card in this just yet I'm going to review it from afar for now I'm gonna keep my sim in my iPhone as long as I can because later this week I'll be starting the 30-day pixel 3 challenge where that's my daily driver for a full month I don't know you know what maybe I'll get ambitious maybe if I like this phone enough I will put my sim 
minute. We'll see what happens. Okay, we're connecting it to Wi-Fi. Wow, it's got an update right out of the box, right on the boot up screen. Update phone, 571 megabytes. And it looks like that's our only option. We can't skip that update. Okay, so it's a very clean looking matte aluminum finish around on the bumper that I'm really digging. Feels great to hold in the hand as well. And as I've mentioned in the past, that glass back, I just think looks so much better than that giant plastic looking back they had on the Razer Phone 1 that did not look as good to me. This is definitely kind of taking it back in terms of design a little bit because I've been using a lot of bezel-less phones over the past few years between the iPhone 10, the 10s Max, and the Note 9, and the S9. And now this phone's just coming straight up front and saying, we don't need a notch, we don't need thin bezels, we're going to take full optimum advantage of our front of the device and fill every square inch of that extra space with stereo speakers, which I also have not heard before. I've never like used a Razer phone at a store or something. So I'm also interested in trying that out for the first time. They've also said the cameras have been improved on the Razer phone too. I imagine that the phone built primarily for gaming doesn't have the best cameras in the world, but I wanna see if they're somewhat decent. And honestly, I wanna see if the microphone can be somewhat better than the Pixel 3 mic, which is not hard to do. In Sadly, the starting price of the Pixel 3, $800, is the same price as this phone. So, wouldn't be hard to beat the Pixel 3 if it came down to a video performance test. Though actually, one thing I'm unsure about, even though they've bragged about the heat sink in the Razer Phone 2, and they've bragged about how much faster they're able to get the Snapdragon 845, does this Android support 4K at 60? The Note 9 does, the S9 does, the OnePlus 6 does, and they all have Snapdragon 845s, and this one says that it even has a faster CPU than that, but the tech specs on the website actually don't even say if it can go up to 4K at 60, it just says 4K. Obviously, for the gaming community, shooting video at 4K at 60 is probably not a big priority, but when you're rocking a 1440p display and you're bragging about refresh rate and how buttery smooth the display is, I think it would be kind of nice to include that. And with the release of the Pixel 3, we also don't know for sure if all Android phones with the Snapdragon 845 can support that now, because apparently you can have such a terrible heatsink that having standard features for 2018 smartphones is not there anymore. So when I just typed my Wi-Fi password in, I noticed that the vibration motor is definitely not what we're used to on like iPhones and Pixels with the taptic feedback. It definitely doesn't feel the same. It feels like we're going backwards to the days where smartphone motors were much more vocal and putting them on the desk made them vibrate quite a lot and make very loud noises. So in that regard, we may be going backwards in time a little bit as well. I actually have the Pixel stand right here and the Razer Phone 2 does now support wireless charging, so let's just make sure they're compatible here. Maybe the coils don't line up or something. Uh-oh, interesting. Looks like the Pixel stand might be a little bit too small for the Razer Phone 2. It doesn't seem to be wanting to charge it. What if I go landscape mode like this? That's not charging it either. Maybe it's not supposed to charge right out of the box while the system updates installing? I have a, a Tesla Qi charger here. Maybe we can experiment while the phone's updating. I love the packaging, by the way, for the Razer Phone 2. Just very, very enjoyable unboxing experience. Okay, so now we've finished the update on the phone. We're booted up, we're on the lock screen. We're only at 90 hertz right now, and I'm already noticing how smooth it is. So I'm gonna immediately open settings and crank that bad boy all the way up to 120 hertz right there. And holy crap. <laughs> Okay, I see what people are talking about now. That, that is pretty dang smooth. The fact that that display looks that clean. It probably doesn't show well over camera, but I must just say, I, I, I see why people want this on phones. This looks really, really clean. Just swiping between apps looks really, really neat now. And I hope there's a few games that can actually support this because I really like the look of this ProMotion display. Okay, so I'm gonna drop it on the Pixel stand here. Uh-oh, this is not charging, actually. Maybe it doesn't line up correctly? It's not charging at all with any part of the Pixel stand. I drop my iPhone on this all the time, it charges it perfectly. Okay, I have a uh, Tesla Qi charger here. Let's boot this boy up, drop the Razer phone on it. Ugh, look at that. It's uh, it's not charging. It's not supporting Qi charging where it probably should. Usually right out of the box, right? Now we do have the Chroma app that I should showcase pretty quick. I've set it to blue so you can change this to whatever color you want. Using this app on the back, you can make it as bright or as dense as you need to. But the logo still stays relatively minimal. It doesn't look incredibly bright or incredibly flashing. It's not like a flashlight's always on. I can tell it's low powered and it probably doesn't hurt the battery that much, so that's neat. But yeah, Qi charging uh, doesn't seem to be working. I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, let me check under battery settings here. There's nothing that says you have to like turn on Qi charging. There's no toggle for it anywhere. Hope 
hopefully mine's not a defect in any way, but yeah, Razer Phone 2 out of the box is not supporting any of my third-party Qi chargers made by Tesla or Google. Maybe I need to try a few more Qi chargers to make sure, but anywho, let, let's try a couple other things. We got the camera app right here. Okay, let's flip this around. We got our telephoto lens that allows us to crop in. Looks pretty good out of the box. Definitely not great, but check out that front-facing camera. Mmm, colors seem pretty desaturated, to be honest. Oh, video, back camera video resolution. Here we go. We can shoot up to 4K, and that's it. It doesn't tell us if it's 60 FPS or anything. Okay, we're shooting it. 4K and I can't tell if it's 60 or not. It just doesn't say. Interesting. I wish the settings would kind of just bring that up and say 4K at 30 or 4K at 60. Because back camera video resolution simply just says 4K. And when you're in the camera app itself, it still says 4K. It doesn't really look 60 FPS by the viewfinder, but maybe they just aren't displaying it. Oh, that's our that's our start recording sound. Okay. Getting some basic video recorded on it. It's kind of wobbly, but it's a loud sound. Let me hit play on this. Oh, and these my speaker some impressions. Basic video recorded on it. Goodness, I'm at half volume and this thing already sounds crazy loud. Jeez. Let me load up a YouTube video here. Let's see how loud we can actually get these things. Okay, get ready for loud Drew. To see what kind of crowds it brings because based on the shipping dates, they don't oh. really seem to be going that far back like iPhone releases usually go. Especially get I accidentally pressed power and that activated the camera. I see why some companies may not put the power button there. Anyway, volume all the way up now. The iPhone 10R is gonna sell like crazy. This is gonna be the hot ticket item. The iPhone 10 R is gonna be the Jeez. top selling iPhone by far. It's going to succeed. They may be right, not trying to disprove them, but I thought in today's video we could They're quite loud. They are a little bit echoey though, not super clear even though they're front firing. Would say they don't sound exactly as good as I was hoping they would sound, but still very, very loud if that's what you're looking for. And I'm sorry, I'm just having a hard time not bringing up how much I like that 120 hertz display. That looks really, really good. Obviously we have plenty of testing to do with this device, but this gives you my first-hand impressions. I like the build quality. I'm confused a little bit for if it can do 4K at 60, if it can do Qi charging, or if mine's broken. We'll be messing around with this thing a little bit more every single day and we'll keep you posted. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have an excellent day. This is your Apple Ship here, and I'll see you in the next one. So guys, we've actually figured out that our unit is not defective. We just have to hold it above, awkwardly above what normally two chargers support, and then it'll start charging. That's the only way to get it to charge. You can come down here, it starts blinking, and it'll charge for a second, but there you go, turned right off. <laughs> they just put the coils in such a bad spot that it probably only charges well with the Razer charger, which is a hundred bucks. Worth it?